Good morning, everyone, and uh, welcome to the Center of Excellence in Migration and Global Studies. It's yet another day. Uh, first of all, we want to welcome our distinguished senior uh, colleagues. Uh, I've uh, welcomed most of them, and I've just seen the immediate past Vice Chancellor, Professor Abdallah Obadamo. Thank you, sir, for being uh, with us. Uh, same thing with all other uh, professors and uh, you know colleagues, including Professor uh, Monio Lua Polani, uh, Professor Soglo, uh, Dr. Fleming uh, from Europe, and the rest of them that will be joining us. I sincerely welcome you. I also apologize uh, to the presenter, uh, Professor Rashid Olani. Uh, uh, for not being able to do this last week uh, due to technical you know, uh, challenge. We want to thank you, sir, for agreeing to do it today. Uh, so you have 15 minutes. Uh, uh, let me also use this opportunity, please, time. once you come in, you should kindly, kindly, kindly mute yourself. Uh, we are recording, kindly mute yourself. Uh, and if I mute you, please remain muted, please, please. Um, so as I was saying, we also apologize for not being able to have uh, Professor Muhammad Ali from Univ uh, Atabasca University yesterday. In fact, he thought it was his own 10 o'clock and our own 4 p.m. You know, there was a miscommunication. So if he's joining us, and uh, Professor uh, Bandele, who actually uh, linked in with us. We sincerely apologize. I have written about three emails explaining and apologizing. And I requested that they should, you should please share that knowledge, extensive experience with us. And I hope they will respond today after feeling bad as it should be yesterday. So again, my apologies, I take full responsibilities and uh, I can only but, you know, follow our mentor, Professor Adamo, in becoming a good communicator, <laughs> both in writing and in speech. Having said that, welcome again to today's uh, presentation uh, titled Migration and the Awari Yoruba Frontiers. History, orality, and the, colo the coloniality of Idewure, or Idewure. I know Professor Rashid has corrected the pronunciation on a few occasions. Professor Rashid Olani is a, is a colleague currently based, as we all can see, Department of History, University of Ibada, is the immediate uh, past coordinator of postgraduate studies at the university. He also serves uh, the Institute of African uh, uh, Studies and the Diaspora you know, Studies. He was trained at Osmano Danfodio University uh, where he had his uh, bachelor's degree coming on top of the class with the two one, uh, which is celebrated, uh, we can celebrate that too. Uh, he made two one, I made two one, but long before his time. <laughs> <laughs> then he went to BUK, uh, BUK uh, for his master's and uh, PhD. And uh, he worked at the Arewa uh, Center for a few years before joining the University of Ibada. He is an external examiner to uh, some universities, I will mention a delicate university where I was uh, and uh, several others uh, that he has, uh, is currently serving on. He's also serving on some uh, universities uh, planning and implementation uh, committee. He has researched and uh, published extensively on uh, micro, micro history, which, and you know, using ethnographic sources which I remember uh, from day one over a year uh, today that the uh, Professor Abdallah Adamo admonished us to begin to look at you know, micro aspect instead of the mega or the macro. And then today we will be listening to the Professor Rashid 
for learning. Uh, Prof, you have 45 minutes at which you will stop and then we open for questions and comments. You respond and then we we'll close shop. We are recording. And then your paper, uh, uh, based on the comments and what have you, we plead that you let us have it permanently. In other words, publish, send it for peer review and publish. It will cost you nothing. And of course, you get a certificate of presentation. Professor Rashid, you have the floor. Thank you, sir. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Professor Tijani, for the uh, introduction. Uh, good morning, distinguished professors, scholars, students, friends, colleagues. Uh, it's my pleasure to share with you this morning uh, my ongoing research uh, on uh, migration and their own universe frontiers. History, orality, the coloniality of Ipiaure. Um, this is uh, a micro history as uh, announced by the director. And I hope that uh, I will gain a lot from your comments and your contributions after this presentation. Uh, this morning, I'm going to talk about, about, the, about the following issues. So the outline is as follows. I will discuss uh, the historiography and geography of Idere. Uh, I will also talk about town formation among the Yoruba people as related to that of Idere. And I will also discuss uh, the revival of ancestral ties followed by relocation and failure of political in integration in Nubumosho. Then relocation and sources of political integration in Ibadan. Finally, I will discuss return and rebuilding of Idere town. Uh, most of our local communities uh, in West Africa, from Mali to Ghana, to Senegal, the Gambia, and Nigeria have uh, elogies of towns, of families. So Idaure people are also like that. Uh, their elogy goes, I mean, uh, a very, very brief, uh, just very few lines of uh, the elogy of Idaure goes like this. Omo agbojigun, omo agbojosin, omo agbojde fufu. Um, the above elogies exemplifies uh, immo uh, immortality and bravery as an important part of Onidere heritage. It's also a pointer to their source, their, the source of their origin, that is uh, Isheri Olofin in local states. Um, most of the prehistorical societies in Africa invented and retained traditions of origin. Uh, their history has demonstrated uh, some kinds of uh, social construction of, uh, of tradition and orality. Uh, this eulogy uh, reminds us of um, how pre-colonial Africans generated and preserved their own history. I'm going to present here ethnographical accounts of micro-local history in order to demonstrate the reconfiguration of power, most especially in the aftermath of uh, anarchy that followed the fall of Odo Empire and affected several small kingdoms in that uh, uh, area. Then I will discuss the appropriation and manipulation of history, most especially in the context of colonialism. Many scholars, most especially uh, Moses Ochonun and Gay Atanda and others, they talk about uh, colonialism, without, uh, colonialism within colonialism most especially with the use of indirect rule and how history was uh, manipulated uh, in order to promote 
uh, power and hierarchy. The knowledge of history has impact on how we understand power, cultural patrimony, and historical memory. So uh, in this uh, presentation, I share the history of Bidere people as part of our national narratives that connect us in different ways. Idere's interland migration narratives demonstrated affinities with Isheri Olofi, the cradle of uh, Awori Yoruba. Uh, Awori is a subset, uh, is a subgroup of, uh, of the Yoruba people, just like we have Jebu, uh, and, and so on like that. So echoes of wars and relocations to Ubomosho and Ibadan, where they had uh, social and political uh, integrations. It's important for us to be reminded that states and societies are products of a system uh, of uh, cultural signification through which they are ratified into Benedict Anderson's notion of imagined communities and Omibaba's idea of nations as narration. Andancy analyzes a nation as socially constructed community imagined by the people who perceive themselves as part of that group. In his uh, uh, preface, Omibaba presages that nations like narratives lose their origins in the myth of time only and only fully encounter their horizon, uh, horizons in the mind's high. Uh, therefore, historical consciousness is required in order to annex the hidden treasure of the past. Uh, it, is, it is very important for us as Nigerians uh, to understand ourselves, uh, our past, and how it is influencing the present. Not, uh, this is uh, not only among the Yoruba people, but also as Nigerians. As uh, as Nigerians. Uh, in the 19th century, uh, only the brave warriors collaborated with other compatriots, as we all know, and fought gallantly to save the soul of the Yoruba nation from the threat of Fulani invasion, uh, most especially the 1840 war at Oshubu. Uh, Tijani 2005-2006, uh, observes that, and I quote, uh, the study of frontier worry greatly illuminates the upfifers and cultural mixture of its populations with special relevance to its impact on 19th century Yoruba interland, of interland warfare and socio-political transformations. So in a sense, uh, we may look at groups as homo homogeneous today, but actually, they have been very heterogeneous in terms of origin. So historical accounts of the remote past have been modeled up arising from, uh, from uh, contemporaneous political manipulations and deliberate uh, distortions. This exemplifies how much uh, our history is prone to politics. I suggest that proper documentation of micro-local history, just like the one I'm doing, invalidates pretentious and self-comforting myth-making myth narratives that promote notions of power and hierarchy. More importantly, as I'm going to demonstrate in this paper, decoloniality as a pedagogical idea in post-colonial studies has the logic and ontology for us to understand and relearn the knowledge that was suppressed or forgotten by hegemonic forces of colonialism mm -hmm. and political modernity. Mm -hmm. uh, the, re the reconstruction of uh, Idere history benefits from four broad sources. One is the classical works on Yoruba, on Yoruba history. Uh, we, are we are possibly familiar with the work of uh, I.B. Akinyele, Oba I.B. Akinyele, 
published in 1911. Uh, Lucy, History of Lagos, published 1914. Um, Samuel Johnson, 1921. Then N.D.O. Yenide, History of Obomosho, published in 1934. Uh, some of these works mentioned uh, the history of Idere people or historical accounts that connected uh, to them. Then the second uh, important source is oral traditions and communal narratives collected from community elders. I also collected oriki, that is the elogies, praise poems, and oratory tradition memorized, preserved, and performed by elderly women and men, as well as youths. Then um, I use cultural patrimony or foot, footprints or landmarks of uh, the Onidere people. This included large family compounds in Nobumosho in uh, Ibadan. Deities and facial marks. And of course, I use archival materials, uh, especially for the period that covered the colonial period. The last three sources point largely to shared memory, which connects generations, towns, and families of Idere to one source, that is Isheri Olofi in the state. Uh, what came to be known as Idere town evolved through historical processes of migratory trends that spanned several centuries and covered many settlements. Migration influenced the origin and growth of Idere. Idere people refer to themselves as descendants of Olofi Ogunfu Minire, the progenitor of Awori Yoruba, who originated from Ileife and founded Isheri Olofi in Ogun State. Um, the only direct worship issue, Legbara, deity of uh, Awori people. The trajectory of their history indicates that they established several settlements before the creation of Idere as, as a kingdom. Now the geographical location. Idere is uh, presently a town located in the present day uh, Ogolua local government area of Oyo State. It's uh, 34 kilometers uh, southeast of Oyo town, that is Oyo Alafi, 50 kilometers east of Ogumosho, 85 kilometers northwest of Ibadan, 16 kilometers east of Ejibo, and 36 kilometers east of Iwo town. Um, we cannot discuss uh, a paper like this without mentioning uh, the issue of town formation among the Yoruba and how migration played dominant roles in that. It's also important if we read through the issue of uh, the Yoruba people, how adventurous uh, hunters, herbalists, and warriors founded towns and settlements. Uh, political intrigues, context for power, and social, and social disputes disperse our worry to different frontiers where they preserve their traditions. The disperser of uh, our worry Yoruba to different parts of Yoruba land have been discussed by scholars, including uh, Tijani, um, Ajetumobi, and others. The crucial role of Ifpa Oracle in the establishment of uh, Yoruba settlements cannot be overemphasized. Um, Ifpa Oracle were usually, uh, was usually consulted uh, for establishment of towns. And also, uh, a powerful deity among the Awol Yoruba, Lens Ashe, that is uh, approval to the Ifpa Oracle for direction or clarification of issues. The only there were largely guided by the Ifa Oraku as an important institution among the Yoruba for, for settlement formation. Um, 
there has been greater interdependence and, and sustenance of uh, cultural values uh, in, in the process of a town formation. From about 1500, the infection of Lagos area became profound in the social, political, and economic, as well as cultural identities of the territories dominated by Olofin Ogufuminiri, the founder of Awori Yoruba. The combination of the crisis that Bini inflation uh, precipitated and series of social disputes after the death of Olof Ogufuminiri set in motion the migration of Onidere and other Awori Yoruba groups, as we have them in Ogun State, in Lagos, and uh, other parts of Yoruba land. However, some scholars, including uh, Agiri, Ajitumobi, and Ajayi, suggest that the source of Awori migration must have been from Ketu, Egbado, and Oyo, rather than Ilife. These are controversies. The, the tradition which linked Ogunfu Minere to Oyo had repercussions on how attempts were made to alter the origin of the direct people for political purposes, most especially from 1939. After leaving Isheri Olof in the 16th century, they moved northwards as directed by Ifa Oraku. They established settlements named Iluaiku, uh, which symbolized their belief in immortality. Following the outbreak of diseases uh, in that settlement, they established a new, another one called Okiagon. After several years without reproduction, they were directed by Ifa to Fake the hill and establish Igbokoto. They left again to establish another one called Yagam. In the 18th century, they finally established a new settlement called Idere. Idere was coined from the word Enitioda Eresi. One of their ancestors had tough lock of hair on his nip. That is the uh, back of a uh, uh, neck. Until the echoes of Yoruba civil wars and threats of uh, Fulani Jihad led to its temporary collapse, Idere was an epicenter of agricultural production and high on work. Deeper knowledge of ancestral ties and family history exposed the complexity of, ident of ethnicity and identity. Uh, this is also a precursor to nation building and peaceful coexistence in a multi-ethnic society like ours. Uh, a sense of belonging and identity, uh, emotions and memory uh, is uh, playing out now as uh, many Awori groups have emerged to revive our central ties. There is a rekindling of our central ties through periodic township meetings, uh, town unions, elite clubs, and cultural uh, revivers. For example, the Ileya Omo Udua Festival, which holds every December to coincide with the coronation and anniversary ceremony of the rainy honor of Ileife, or Badi Yenita Ogunwusi, or Jaja II, indicates renewed interest in genealogy and heritage of Odudua, as well as Olofin Ogufo Meneri. There is also a worry renewal group led by professionals and, and uh, educated elites. Um, the relocation and failure of political integration uh, in Nubumosho. If the red people are not isolated from insecurity and civil wars, uh, or the threat of Fulani Jihad after the collapse of Udo Empire, relocation of ancient kingdoms and crown kings to Nubumosho was, uh, I mean, a formidable uh, military camp took place uh, in the early 19th century. Ogumoso's popular tradition has it that people from 143 towns and villages congregated in the town during this period of chaos. Religious and spiritual considerations in the choice of Onidere settlement in Ogumoso uh, was very dominant. Uh, they usually settled in a place where they have uh, lateral uh, con 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 congregations, that is Nyagi, uh, which uh, is very suitable for the worship of their, their deity, Israel Egbara. Displaced communities named settlements after their original homesteads. 
So in Ogumoso, you have Ile Onidere, or Agbo Ile Onidere in Ogumoso. So the Onidere established Onidere, Ile Onidere uh, at Aromale Okioba area of Ogumoso. Uh, settlement of political, pra, uh, of political pragmatism and centralization of power adopted by Bali Ogumoso right from the time of Toeje up to uh, Odunaro, uh, entrenched power and authority while alienating the displaced crown kings in the 19th century. So the crown kings or crown heads laps into what they call nominal, nominal title holders. Them what, uh, they gave them um, a borough that is red cap. So in a sense, the British must have borrowed this idea of red cap chiefs uh, from a pre-colonial uh, political arrangement. So displaced communities were hosted outside uh, the Obuma short Town wall under the leadership of Onkwetu Ijeru, another powerful military leader uh, whose uh, territory was also deserted uh, during the 19th century, but relocated to Obuma during the period. They participated actively in the wars prosecuted by Ogumoso, but they were excluded from political power as they were previously uh, recognized. In a twist of history, the Onidia Ray in Ogumoso hosted a powerful Fulani man uh, from Bonu named Malam Sambo. Uh, he was also called Elerija, that is, merchant of war. He supported Ogumoso in our various wars, but was hosted by the Onidere in Ogumoso. So as a matter of social integration, integration the uh, Ile Sambo still exists uh, at, uh, at uh, Onidere Company in Ogumoso up to today. Displaced heads, head chiefs, such as Onidere, resented the political arrangement, which degraded and subjugated them to Onkwetu Jeru's authority in Ogumoso. Political arrangement robbed them of traditional position and prestige. It was not only the uh, Onidia who were treated as such, even very powerful provincial ki uh, uh, kings, uh, such as Onikoyi and, uh, Oni uh, and uh, Oniresa, they were all uh, demoted uh, when they relocated to Gumoso. So the failure of political integration made uh, Ogunlola, who was the only there in Ogun, so to relocate to Ibadan. Because Ibadan was just evolving as a powerful military camp during, during the time. It was, uh, Ogunlola was also a prominent abbot who was patronized by warriors. His spiritual powers and his well were indispensable to the wars prosecuted by Ibadan. Some of his people remained in Ogun, so while he came to Ibadan. Ogunola entered Ibadan with great nobility and large followership. He was hosted by the Are Onaka Kampo, Oluyedun. That is, uh, Oluyedun was the first known leader in, the, uh, in modern Ibadan history. So he ruled between, 19, uh, between 1831 to 1833. Oluyedun, just for the purpose of history, was a son of uh, Afonja and the first leader of modern Ibadan. Many great warriors migrated to Ibadan at this time, as we all know. They settled at Orinyogi, just like they settled also in Ogunoso. They settled at Orinyogi, that is uh, Latric uh, Con Christians, uh, or Jaba Ibadan. Ogunola's younger brother, Olubodun, was a great warrior. Uh, Ishuelegbara and Ifa, was, um, Ifa worship by the Onidere were indispensable to the wars fought by Ibadan. I mean, so in a sense, um, Olubodo and his elder brother, Ogunola, were great allies to the wars of Ibadan. Olubodo was a warrior under Oluyedu and subsequently under Bashon Oluyole of Ibadan, who ruled between 1836 to 1847. Ibadan adopted a republican system of government which recognized bravery rather than hereditary. So this was different from the political structure adopted by Ogumoso. Uh, so due to his popularity and large followership among Ibadan warriors, Ogunola was offered a chieftaincy title, uh, uh, which he rejected. 
he rejected the title based on the fact that as a crown king before his, uh, before before arriving in Ibadan, uh, it will be degrading for him to serve as a chief under on crown king because uh, the leaders of Ibadan by that time were known as Bale, that is on crown kings. So uh, this action has been rejected by the descendants. This, this action has been regretted by his descendants, uh, who felt that they could have become highly influential in the chieftaincy politics of Ibadan. The historical regret has been reversed. One of his descendants, Chief Rahuf Emiola Oyerindeonidere, was installed as Bada Balogun, Arebe Omo Balogun of Ibadan land in 2016. He was also promoted to Ota Balogun of Ibadan land and now Asiwaju Balogun Olubadan of Ibadan land in 2019. So this is, uh, a, this is a part of the political integration that occurred in Ibadan, unlike Obumoso. Another descendant, Alaji Amusat Olaiguega, is the incumbent Olojo of Ojo. Uh, for those who are familiar with Ibadan, Ojo is uh, a very popular uh, area, um, uh, very sprawling in, in Ibadan. So his son is also the, uh, uh, is also, uh, the Bale of Elesu, that is uh, the, the head or the, the, the leader of uh, all the uh, worshippers of uh, Ishu deity in Ibadan land. He was installed in 2014. So after the death of Ogulola, the paraphernalia of office of Onidere were returned to Ogumosho. As stated above, Oludo, Olubodun participated in several wars fought by Ibadan between 1833 and 1840, uh, such as Owiwi War, Arakangba War, Eleduwe, and finally Osogo War. Olubodun was one of the war chiefs that Oluyole delegated to fight the Fulani at Osogo. Olubodu and other war chiefs reported against the arbitrary and oppressive tendencies of Bashan Oluyoli, which led to many, uh, which led to civil war in the Badan, uh, which is uh, which is usually called Ijaburu Nijabadan. Uh, Ruth uh, Watson has written a book on that. So Olubodu was shot dead by the military boys of Oluyoli. Therefore. Uh, Ogunola was disenchanted about the brutal murder of his brother, who fought many wars in, for Ibadan. He, relo he relocated from Ojaba by crossing Kudeti River to establish a new settlement at Ojabo, a less developed outskirts where he had often affected herbs, uh, which was called Igboifa by that time. So. Uh, as a result of that, he was one of the earliest uh, settlers uh, at Ojagbo Ibadan. The Onidere Ibadan integrated into the social fabric of Ibadan society. Like other Ibadan warriors, they established farm plantations and villages at Ojo uh, and Olao Gunia Bag International Market. They retained their identity, such as facial mark, the worshipping of Ishuelegbara. They maintained close links with the original homestead at Ijeure. Now, after sojourn at uh, Ubumosho and Ibadan, there was a return and rebuilding of Ijeure. Uh, in the 1870s, the Onidere in Ubumosho made attempts to return and rebuild Ubumosho, or to rebuild Ijeure. The attempt was, was frustrated by the Kriji War, 1877 to 1893 because Idere was located at a very critical uh, route whereby the falling uh, soldiers uh, in Elisha were taken along that route to Okyogu area. Uh, and the villages or towns uh, located at, uh, along that uh, route were requested to carry the corpses of, uh, of those falling soldiers to their various homes. So and many of them were enslaved as well or forcibly recruited into the, uh, into the army of some warriors. So as a result of that, um, 
the attempt to rebuild Idere at that time was frustrated. Ogun also rulers also strongly opposed relocation of displaced communities because relocation uh, implied that it would diminish, it would have diminished uh, the, the status of Ogun also as a successor state of Odoye Empire during that time. So the last attempt was made by Labiran in the early 1890s after the British intervened and restored peace in Yoruba land. So Labiran used that opportunity to uh, move some people to Idere. Uh, Labiran and Ola, Ola was Onidere at Sogumosho, who became the Onidere in 1900, went to Allah of Yadi Yemi the first, that is uh, Allah of Yofoyo, who ruled between 18, 1890, 1876 to 1905 to secure his endorsement of uh, Idere boundaries that was becoming controversial among the neighboring areas. So following the British colonial rule, most of the displaced communities returned to their original homestead and refused to be grouped under Obumosho. Uh, they opted for the offer lordship of Alafi uh, under whom they remained until the 1930s. So I've discussed this uh, initially, that in, uh, by 1939, there were attempts to um, reinvent the oral tradition of uh, uh, the people in order to, con to conform uh, to, the, um, to, to the power structure of that, of that time, especially under the indirect rule system. Uh, the Olo Jede Commission of 1976 and the Oloko Commission of 1995 and 2001 recognized the Onkwetu Ijeru, I've mentioned uh, Onkwetu Ijeru before, as the prescribed authority over minor chieftaincy and land area of the Onidere, as well as uh, many others in the Ogolua local government. Uh, in conclusion, uh, even though the Onidere returned to their original homestead, but certainly not in the same old form. The resettled community experienced uh, the population. As we have uh, learned in this uh, presentation, part of the community led by uh, Ogunlola settled in Ibadan and other places. Whereas not all those who settled in Ogumasho returned, they, they are still there up to today. Some maintained dual homes Interfacing Obumasho and Idere, the population also affected its power dynamics. Idere was subjugated under Obumasho political and administrative appendage. The Onidere were never fastest of anyone, with the exception of Fala of Nofoyo. Their displacement and relocation, as well as colonial subjectivity, made it appear as such. Colonial rule, with its uh, hegemonic power, distorted pre-colonial history. Because as demonstrated by uh, Atanda and uh, Moses Ochonu, there was uh, colonialism within colonialism. Because many of the powerful kings that were used uh, for indirect rule invented a new tradition, a new history to justify their newfound role in the colonial arrangements such that uh, they appear to be extremely powerful uh, with the notion that, okay, we have uh, uh, our pre colonial uh, empire or kingdom was very huge. It covered several uh, places, towns, villages, and so on. Uh, Osutoku and Oduobi um, noted, and I quote, that the trend towards polit political groupings in Obumaso progressively derived from attempts by some of the principal hubbers at reviving the pre 19th century claims of our neighboring communities. This may be traced to the tendency of the, of the chieftaincy committee during its early years as prescribed authority for the Obumaso area of recognizing these hubbers as patrons of chieftains over which they, success, uh, they successfully established such claims. So um, I thank you, ladies and gentlemen, uh, for this uh, opportunity. Thank you, Professor Tijani, for giving me the podium. 
thank you. Thank you very much. You can see the immediate past vice chancellor clapping for you. Uh, let me join in too. If he's clapping, which is very rare, uh, we thank you for this uh, presentation. Uh, we are now at the uh, point of uh, comments and uh, questions. I have uh, posted in the chat room twice or thrice that if you have comment or question kindly uh, signify uh, please do that. Uh, Professor Rashid Olani, thank you. Can you stop sharing so that we can okay, go thank to you. Just stop sharing, please. Thank you. Yes, can, thank you. I can see everybody now. Okay, because some people you. will wave hand to be called. Uh, uh, okay, I can see Professor Sugolo's hand. I'm just going to take this. Uh, okay, before I open up... Uh, to the general, kindly please mute yourself, please, please, so that I don't just yank you out. Mute yourself, please. Some of us are muting and then we are making noise. You know, it's not, you, you just wasted and then we have to edit the video now with all this comment. It, it's unnecessary, please. Thank you. Uh, you ended up with Atonda and Ochono's uh, popular dictum, colonialism without, within colonialism. And as you present generally, the, uh, the upheaval in, in Yoruba land during the 19th century in particular, and the onslaught of uh, Fulani jihadists, and the mix of some of them, even the case of Malam Sambo, helping the Idewure people, I begin to wonder the issue of slavery, both okay. slavery in the African sense and slavery okay. in the European sense. And I would like you to share with us that element uh, that, uh, that played out during this period. Uh, you've uh, okay. also mentioned Malam Sambo. If you can share with us, apart from the fact that he's, he's an old glory, whatever was, uh, 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 given to him in terms of land. But what about his, uh, his, uh, um, uh, his uh, offspring? What about his, uh, uh, you know, uh, the hometown? And uh, what have you been able to do? Or is this something that is, uh, is part of the ongoing research? And then lastly, uh, I just wanted to chip in that uh, despite this, uh, situation, we have new settlement. But as you have presented, you said new settlement in the case of the Deure, uh people uh, created opportunities and uh, but such opportunities were also challenged uh, by continuous uh, uh, situation. Uh, whoever is there, no guest, kindly mute yourself, please. So we will go in this order. Uh, Professor Muni Olua Olani, you will speak. You can go ahead and unmute yourself. Uh, Dr. Williams, uh, Professor Abdallah Ubadamu, and then uh, Emeritus Professor Sogolo in that order. So Professor Muni Olua Olani, may go ahead. Thank you very much, sir. I like to Thank and also commend the lecturer, Professor Rashid Olani. Um, I started to wonder why we don't get to hear a lot of history these days. Uh, this presentation to me is commendable. And uh, my first question will be, what are our historians doing to ensure that history is communicated to um, generations? For the presentation, I, I, I asked myself the question when I heard of um, the Fulani jihadists in the 19th century. So we know that we've always had 
interactions with the Fulanis. And um, jihadists had been in the South for whatever reason. But um, the report of Malam Sambo, who became integrated in the community. And to the extent that even a house, uh, Ile Sambo was named after him and still existent in Ogumosho. But um, Ogunlola, only they were left Ogumosho because there could not be political integration. So I'm just wondering, how could Malam Sambo, a Fulani, be integrated in Ogumosho while somebody who is supposedly a Yoruba could not be integrated in Ogumosho? Was um, Sambo's integration a social one? And he didn't seek for political integration while um, Ogunlola insisted on political integration and was not content in having just social integration. Why could we not live together? That's my question. So what is what are our historians doing in this present day to educate the populace? If we have the Fulanis and they are causing trouble in, their, in the communities where they have found themselves, what are the historians doing to tell them that in the beginning it wasn't like that? Thank you. Thank you, ma. Thank you. The next person should please unmute himself. Uh, doctor, if you are unable to, let me just unmute you. I believe it's uh, Williams. Yes, Dr. Prof. Williams, I guess. OK, yes, you are. OK, please go ahead, sir. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, Professor Lani, that was a brilliant presentation. I know how difficult it is sometimes when you have to put together documented evidences, you know, um, particularly when issues are oratory. Um, one of the difficulties that I think uh, anthropologists will always face is the use of methodology. But in this case, I had thought this, if you had told us the methodology that was adopted you know, I think it will really help us and expand the scope. So I think it was an omission, maybe an oversight. But I think for a presentation like this, you have had told us the methodology that was adopted in this kind of uh, study, even though it's an ongoing study. So I think that's uh, a major omission. So you could just uh, take a look at that, sir. Thank you very much, bro. Thank you. Thank you very much. I think you mentioned it, uh, but it will explain, you know, you answer that question. The next person, please, uh, should please um, unmute. I believe is uh, our former vice chancellor, Professor Abdallah. Is thank you very person. much. And thank you very much. Person. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much. Let me just briefly talk about the methodology that uh, uh, was mentioned by Emina. Uh, that, that's always a, a, a point of friction between social scientists. Uh, physical scientists and humanities uh, uh, students. There's always this issue of methodology of methodology. Uh, everybody expects you to have a, a one-step methodology of how you collect your data, how you interact with your data, and so on. It doesn't, it doesn't always work out like that. A lot of the data flows in, and we just simply discuss it. It's a historical narrative. It's not something that you do in a laboratory. That being said, I, I'm very fascinated by the fact that uh, by Professor Olani um, had a lot of experience from the north, uh, but uh, didn't uh, incorporate it maybe in this particular presentation or in a wider presentation. I see a lot of similarities between this uh, internal internal migration that he talks about with the Fulani uh, from, from in northern Nigeria. I'm a Fulani myself, and I consider myself an immigrant uh, to where I am because my people came from Agadez, uh, they come from Burkina Faso, they come from all over. But at what point do you accept your identity as a person belonging to where you are? This is because I, I see all sorts of uh, terms being thrown about coloniality and post-coloniality. So the Pulani are colonialists, there is no doubt about it. They came, they saw, they conquered. But then they become absorbed themselves. They lost their language. I'm a Pulani, but I cannot speak my language. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it is the same thing with the I do, uh, I do, wood, I dare worry, I dare worry mm -hmm. people. Are, are they different linguistically? Do they speak a, a, a different kind of Yoruba? 
uh, do they look different? Because the planning are definitely absolutely different from the Hausa uh, in terms of structure, in terms of language, in terms of historiography, in terms of everything. They are different. They are two totally separate uh, people brought together by war in, uh, at, at, at the end. So uh, the, I do worry it's distinctly different from the rest of the Yoruba. I mean, are they totally different? For us to be able to say that there is internal in-group migration or external out-group migration uh, is very, very fascinating uh, to me. Because we're talking about hegemony. We're talking about coloniality. And we're talking about post-coloniality. The assumption is that colonialism it deals with forces that uh, translocate from one location to another, and, and they just simply take over. So is colonialism something that can happen without war, without force? Uh, can somebody just colonize a, a particular group of people by, without any violence incident? Like, for instance, the Aborigines in, in, in Australia, they were colonized by white people. But there was a lot of war. That was the, the white people introduced diseases and so on. Were well, there are such social disruptions as a result of movement of one people to, uh, to from one place to, to another. And does this affect this? I do worry uh, uh, people. Because uh, to, to me, coming from the North, Yoruba is Yoruba. I mean, I, I don't know the, the, the differences between the various Yoruba. And the same thing from, from a person coming from the South, to him or to them, Fulani is Fulani. But there are nine different groups of Fulani, nine. And they all range in, in terms of uh, uh, color. The very, very light-skinned Fulani are different from the very, very dark-skinned Fulani, but they all speak the same language. So I just want to know, either I do worry different Yoruba, or they are just simply the same Yoruba. How will I know and I do worry if I see one? Uh, how do I know an Obomoso if I see one? I'm also fascinated by the idea of internal integration. And I, the professor did not mention, maybe in the paper, he might mention Abna Cohen's work uh, on, on, on uh, Sub Shagamu or Sagamu or somewhere. I know where house settlers integrated themselves in, in Shagamu and, and they settled there. Abna Cohen did an absolutely brilliant uh, ethnographic work of, of house settlers in Shagamu. And, I, and I'd like to see if this kind of integration of the Iduwari uh, or, or, or something, because the house are distinctly different, they settled in Shagamu and become integrated. The Plani are distinctly different. They settled all over the northern Nigeria and become integrated in a negative way. They lost their language, completely lost their language. But the Iduari, are they different kind of uh, Yoruba that, that lost their language or lost their culture or lost something in the same scale as uh, the Plani? So I, 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 I uh, Professor, Professor Olani, Professor Olani uh, studied in uh, Dunfordio, he studied in uh, uh, BUK and uh, worked at uh, Arewa House. So I, I think he has a lot of data about uh, Northern historiography to be able to create a, a comparative study uh, between internal migration of the Iduari people and, and the plan. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you, Thank you. very much. Uh, the next person is uh, Emeritus Professor Sogolo. The old man. <laughs> Baba, please, you have the floor. Should I unmute you? Check. Okay, you are, you are good to go, sir. Thank you very much, sir. I, uh, first of all, listening to it, uh, Lani, I, I, it takes me back to the 50s and 80s uh, when I was at the it, it was interesting because uh, much of these uh, uh, stories of the, the Yoruba uh, ethnic group how uh, they were, you know, had in, intra. As a matter of fact, the the word Yoruba did not exist or is very much late because these were isolated uh, 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 pockets of uh, ethnic groups, uh, the Jeshas, the the. Uh, very much later, and in fact, the term Yoruba, you know, was a political uh, concept. Uh, it did not exist very much at the at the beginning. But let me just want make a point which I I, I disagree with uh, in terms of what the uh, professor Adamu I just said that uh, the Fulanese uh, were integrated in, in those places. They went to in the south. They were not. 
fully integrated as such. The Fulanis came in and they had their own settlement in uh, what we call, you know, well, in, in uh, what it would have, I would say quarters. They have their, in, in each of these uh, Yoruba land, you have the names for the areas where uh, Sabo, okay, it was Sabo, where they settled. And uh, if you went in there, the language, the, the Hausa language that you will speak. So I don't think. Oh, well, you, you, you've uh, mute yourself, sir. You probably put your hand on the, um, Professor Sogolo. Kindly unmute yes. yourself, sir. Uh, oh, oh, oh. We lost you because you 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 probably mistakenly touched the, the audio. And then oh. mute yourself. <laughs> uh, go ahead, we can hear you now. What we can hear you now. He was trying to call me up using my, my phone rather than my, sorry for okay. that. So what, what I'm saying is that uh, the, to commend the British for their role in uh, first, in bringing the, the Yoruba race together because they, they were responsible for that. And then secondly, for uh, bringing peace. In fact, they, they also made the, the British brought peace to some uh, uh, in Yoruba land. What I want to ask is, is this. On the overall, will you dare say that the colonial conquest by the British was a good thing it's because it, it united them. That gave them a political voice. The Yorubas are very... And that was the making of this, because if the British did not do that, then, of course, each of these pockets of uh, ethnic groups will remain isolated. So you won't have a political force that you find uh, uh, today. And I want to ask whether, uh, as a Yoruba man, the author will say, we Okay, uh, I think uh, we, we kind of, what you have a gist I, of what- I'll finish, we, I hope you heard me. Thank you, sir. No. We have a gist of, no, we have a gist of what okay. was, and to ask you, okay. uh, the okay. idea that the British unified the Yorubas is yes. something that is debatable. Uh, yes. From my own perspective and my knowledge, uh, I do not, I will not agree with that because in fact, in the nineties, uh, when you look at the Awori people in what is today Mosson, Ijegun, Akeson, you know, before you get to a job, uh, they are continue that rivalry, that disunity created by the British because whoever support the British uh, 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 intervention, were the people that was actually, you know, giving the, it's like a, creating the warranties without calling it warranties, you know, and uh, I don't know whether the uh, presenter will agree with me. But before I allow you to respond to those questions, uh, it just occurred to me that I have one in addition to what I said before. Uh, you mentioned disease outbreak as being responsible for one of the several you know, uh, internal migrations or displacement. And I was curious about what type of disease outbreak you know, during that period, uh, which may be of interest to those in the sciences to further interrogate or those in public health to further interrogate. Thank you very much. So you have the floor, sir, Professor Okay, uh, thank you very much. Uh, first and foremost, uh, I thank you all for your comments. I thank uh, Professor Abdullah Adamu. Um, just for the record, I, I work with the Center for Research and Documentation Kano, uh, CRD, uh, North Harry House. And um, uh, Professor Adamu uh, 
was a, a great ally of uh, CRG Kano. Um, Professor Tijani asked uh, some questions about slavery in African sense and then uh, European sense. I don't know where that uh, question is coming from, Prof. Hello, Professor Tijani. Hello, I'm here. Which one? Um, Which are I don't my know questions? Where uh the one on slavery in african sense no no i said uh, yes african sense, so that i'll be able to respond uh, appropriately you know internal slavery yes uh was ongoing apart from the yes. transatlantic or the trans-saharan yes. uh, i yes. know that my great 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 you know uh grandpa's chief kakawa yes. who happens to be an abagmon uh, yes. chief and then the fourth class chief in lagos island owned slaves Mm -hmm. And within yes. our okay. black family compound, people now, who sleep now, not sleep in now, our area. I we sleep inside saying. it. Uh, so. I understand what you are saying. Yes, uh, the only there were slave traders. Uh, they were slave mm -hmm. raiders because they were warriors. Mm -hmm. And as a result of that, when they got to Ibadan, uh, they used their slaves in different farm plantations. They have farm mm -hmm. plantations in the present Odobo barracks at Ojo, Ibadan and also at uh, Bagi uh, International Market. So this, I mean, they had a lot of farm plantations and those, that also reflected in their eulogy. But uh, many of those uh, slaves were of course in, uh, integrated socially into the uh, family companies. Then the issue of uh, Malam Sambo, uh, this is uh, a very huge uh, issue in the historiography of the 19th century. Um, many Fulani migrated southwards. Many of them, possibly affected by the jihad or displaced by the jihad, move uh, southwards, uh, not minding the risk because migration to the south by that time it was a risk. But there was a kind of social trust between the Yoruba warlords and some of these uh, Fulani, particularly those of them that possessed certain qualities or certain skills used in warfare. So they were accommodated, they were given land to settle. Uh, so apart from Malansambo, which is unique to my own study, there are other pockets of Fulani who migrated during that period and then integrated socially into uh, Yoruba society or Ubuma so in particular. So they were given land for farming. Their descendants are completely Yoruba today. Of course, they can have the inkling of where they migrated from, like Malansambo migrated from Bono. He was a full army from Bono. But of course, they may not be able to trace, uh, you know, after several generations, they may not be able to trace their, their hometown and so on like that. So, um, and of course, the full army that migrated to Yubala in the 19th century, are completely different from the Fulani that migrated to Yoruba land in the 20th century. Because those that migrated to Yoruba land in the 20th century have their own different uh, settlement. They call it Ga, G-A-A, -A, Ga. So when you hear Ga in Yoruba land, it means Fulani settlement. And you have several Ga settlements in Yoruba land. In Idere town today, there are six distinct Fulani settlements, distinct, six distinct, and they are separated. They are not socially integrated at all because they live in the, um, in the forest. They have their own uh, cattle ranches and so on like that. They live their life differently from those in the town. Of course, uh, they obey the laws and orders. They obey the authority. They pay taxes and so on like that, uh, but they are not integrated. They have their own in a social life, which is different uh, from, from, uh, from the Yoruba people. Uh, Professor Olani raised the question of historical silences and what are historians doing? Yes, we thank uh, the Historic Society of Nigeria for making efforts, even during the military, up to the time of uh, President Jonathan and Obasanjo and so on like that, to ensure that we have a restoration of history in our curriculum. And Professor Tijani was the vice uh, president of uh, Historical Society of Nigeria during that time. So 
Uh, and after the restoration of history in the, in the school curriculum, many books have been written. I wrote one. Historical Society of Nigeria wrote a uh, uh, volume as well. So um, we are communicating uh, historical knowledge to generations to come. And this is one of its, uh, one of such efforts. Then on the issue of social integration of Malam Sambo, raised by Professor Lani, yes, Malam Sambo, as I've, as I've said, is socially integrated. Now, whenever his, uh, his descendants are going to fill any form now, this national identity form, uh, the national identity number or something, NIN, they will put Obomosho or your state. They will not put uh, Bonu state or any other place. And ethnic group, they will put Yoruba and so on like that. Because intermarriages, social integration have taken place. Then Ogunola, Ogunola's uh, idea was about political integration, which was not allowed at all at, the, at that time. He was not the only one, but he could not have just surrendered uh, to, to the, to the uh, hegemony of the Ogumosho leaders at the time because he had, his, he, he had his own history, he had his own heritage, he had his own crown. So definitely he, he, he was opposed to subjugation. That was why he strived to move out to save corridor especially Ibadan, that was Republican in nature. Of course, he moved to Ibadan, another imagining uh, university at that time. Not that he left totally to cross the, uh, to cross uh, Ripa Niger to, to other places. Then uh, Dr. Williams, I thank you very much on methodology. You know, this is just uh, an aspect of uh, a very good research and um, um, so your, your comments is uh, well appreciated. Uh, Professor Adamu has raised, raised a lot of issues on internal migration and how do we recognize an Idere man if we see one? You cannot, I'm afraid, because an average Idere man is the descendant of Awori Yoruba, just like you have many subgroups of the Fulani. You, have, you also have subgroups among the Yoruba. You have Yoruba dialects. You have Ijebu dialects, you have uh, Egba dialects, you have uh, Ijesha dialects, you have Ondo dialects, you have Ekiti dialects, you have uh, Ikale dialects, you have Egbado dialects, and so many others, you have Awori dialects. So, um, of course, because of the fact that uh, the Onidia Re moved out of Isheriolof in Lagos in the 16th century. They must have lost their Awodi dialect completely, but not the heritage, not that sense of identity. So the facial mark of only the red people is also common in Ogbomosho area. You know, the gumbo something, uh, or this uh, Akintola mark, so that you see on uh, any face of an uh, uh, or a bad man is, you know, is common among them. So um, that is it. So I thank you very much about Abner Cohen. Yes, I'm very familiar with uh, his works. I've used it extremely well. Um, Professor Sogolo, thank you very much for your question and contribution about uh, Yoruba as a political concept. Well, um, the etymology of Yoruba is beyond this paper, but uh, you see, Yoruba uh, was originally the language spoken by the old Oyo people, and it was the name of their ethnic group. So that's how it emerged. So whatever colonialism did to it, well, uh, Yes, before colonialism, there were several subgroups of the Yoruba, just like I mentioned, Ijesha, Ijebu, Egba, and so on like that.
Hello? 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 Hello, hello. Go ahead, sir. Go ahead, sir. Hello. Professor Lali, yes. go ahead. So, thank you very much. Just are my responses. Okay, thank you very much. I, I'm asking, uh, before we round up, I would like uh, two people to say something. Uh, I can see my first roommate, <laughs> and I'm emphasizing that. And uh, he's also an expert on Awori. He's a PhD from University of Ibadan. He's on the other side of Awori, uh, different from the side that I had worked on. Uh, Dr. Abib Sonny is a senior lecturer at the Lagos State University. If you can just share with us. Uh, if you comment, then the second person will be uh, Mr. Taiwo or Chief Taiwo, uh, who is the head of uh, a group trying to put together, you know, the the Awaris within Nigeria and outside Awari, I mean outside Nigeria. So if you could, uh, let me see, Sunny, I've I've asked you to unmute yourself. And then let me see, Taiwo, Oye Taiwo, Mr. Oye Taiwo, ask to unmute. If I can't get them in another few seconds, then we will wrap up. Okay. okay. Dr. Sonny, Oye thank Taiwo. you. Yes. Okay. Oye Taiwo, please go ahead, sir. Okay. Thank you very much, Professor. This is a refreshing uh, uh, paper. And I think, um, like it was said, uh, earlier, I think the federal government should be able to encourage uh, the study of history in Nigeria. Because some of the problems we have in Nigeria today um, is because we don't have uh, history. It's a very important in the life of, you know, people. And uh, it to help us to uh, see how relationship are managed before and how it can be improved. And I think a lot of work, you know, uh, still, um, are still uh, we still have a lot of work to do on our world in particular, because um, I was surprised when um, Professor Tijani was telling me of Idebu. I've never heard it before. And the story I heard about uh, Awori in uh, Ogbomosho was different. So it is, um, it's a welcome development. I'm, a, I'm the chairman of our think tank, and we are trying to put together uh, the history of our world. We want to put it in the proper perspective. And I think this one will go a long way in helping us. I must thank you for this opportunity. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Why you kindly mute yourself. Dr. Sonny, if you're there, if not, I will read what you posted even before calling him. Uh, okay, quote, I am, although, I am, yes. Dr. Sonny, are you there? Oh, okay, sir. Yes, yes. I am here, I am here, yes. Thank you very much, Professor Tijani, for uh, this wonderful opportunity. Uh, I, I also want to thank Professor Rashid Olani for his paper. Uh, we have shared some uh, information in the past concerning the settlement of the Awari people in the Obomosho area, and he has brought that to the front for now. I enjoyed the little access that I've listened to. And it also goes to show that the issue of migration should not be uh, a, a one sided uh, issue. It's cut across different strata of various societies. In fact, there is the perception in recent times that even the Lagos Awari settlement goes beyond. The coming of uh, all of the, the popular all of the that we have always been uh, seen as the patriarch and the arrow civilizator of uh, the settlers in Lagos. So the uh, Awori or uh, the Awori people, the now know, are also part of the Awori settlement, just as we will find amongst the Awori the people, the, the Buddha diaspora, if I can use that word, some Awori settlement in modern Lagos State. As well as in, in uh, modern Ogun state, up to some part of the Republic, but whose uh, identity have been um, so overtaken by the settlement where they.
I think we, we lost him too. Uh, well, he is an expert, as I said. He also did his PhD on uh, the Awori in the Eastern Frontiers. Uh, so, Dr. Sonny, are you there? Well, I would like to thank each and every one of you. I also would like to thank uh, our participants, but uh, let me also use this opportunity to thank the, the, uh, the Vice Chancellor, Professor Femi Peters, uh, for approving all that we sent to him concerning the Professorial Fellows and uh, uh, both Professorial Fellow, Associate Fellow, Senior Fellow. Uh, we got this letter yesterday. And oh, I, I put a call to the VC of uh, ABU, uh, who was so delighted and said, wow, uh, we met, we talked, you convinced me in uh, uh, Dubai. And I begin to think about the connection between construction management, I repeat construction management and migration studies and global studies generally. So he is so delighted and he will uh, present to us maybe in uh, May or June. So we want to thank the Vice Chancellor, Professor Femi Peters for finding time to, to work on this. We should be having also Professor Taufik Ibrahim, uh, former uh, VC of uh, al Ikma University, uh, joining us as a fellow for six months. Uh, Professor Mohammed Ali, the chair of the Commonwealth of Learning and the professor of uh, distinction at uh, Athabasca University. We will also uh, have been appointed. These are non-stipendiary uh, opportunities uh, created to at least encourage us and uh, harvest those intellectual uh, uh, knowledge of those that have been selected. Uh, so if we call on you and then we, we give you that, uh, uh, if we call on you, I don't want to say we give you that opportunity. If we call on you, please, please, please uh, be part of the center. Uh, it's a great thing to share knowledge and to be with us. Again, I thank each one of you. Uh, we are expecting a new day for Professor Ali's presentation. Uh, I have taken full responsibility for the miscommunication. Professor Ali was getting ready. Uh, 10 o'clock is time in Athabasca, Canada. And uh, at about 3.30, he, he reached out to me via email that is trying to sign in. And then Professor Bandele will introduce him also. And I said, no, it's 10 o'clock Nigeria. That is what we advertise. Uh, but uh, again, I pleaded with him and I'm using this opportunity to apologize for the mix up. We really will learn from his uh, extensive and global experience when it comes to fourth revolution in education that we ended up doing a fantastic round table yesterday. And uh, we will be sending the video uh, recording to everyone. On this note, I thank Professor Rashid Olani for uh, this intellectual uh, presentation, so informative, so uh, educative, so, so interesting. And it's also an indication, it's part of what we fought for when we started the, uh, the campaign for the reintroduction of history in primary and secondary school. Uh, today we can boast of that reintroduction. Professor Rashid has written using the template of the curriculum that we developed Despite the challenges, you know, the government will ask, okay, society go ahead. But of course, government officials, you know, we, we saw air, you know, they put us in mosquito infested uh, hotels, motels, not even, <laughs> and then we, well, we, we had on, we went there, we started writing, they collected every, and today, you know, we have a curriculum that people are working on. But the pedagogy and the retraining of teachers is very, very important as Professor Munisol Amonio Lua Olani uh, mentioned. So we need to do more of that. Uh, please don't challenge me 
to start history department at now. I will not do it. Uh, I think I need to rest. <laughs> so, <laughs> because I know that is where we may be leading to. Uh, Baba Sogolo can say, you, you, you join us for the philosophy. Why not? Uh, it is it's so challenging. I think we have enough department that we need to fund. We need to encourage people. And the history is also multidisciplinary, as we have seen. We can have history of science. It's a huge grant opportunities at the University of London, SOAS in particular, where I went. Huge opportunity that we are not taking advantage of. So until we start working in a multidisciplinary manner, I think we will remain uh, in our silo. And I don't think we want to. Uh, Professor Rashid Olani, we thank you. And uh, please share with us the book when you complete or send us an article for peer review that we can publish. Uh, again, we do publish CMDS journal. Uh, by June, we should be having volume two. We have enough articles peer reviewed that are good to go. And uh, we're looking forward to more articles. Uh, and then we thank you. Stay blessed. And uh, I think uh, we can sign out by unmuting everybody. Ask all to unmute. And then we clap for Professor Olani for a brilliant work. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.